My name is Dr. Maria Giroux and I'm an obstetrics and gynecology resident at the University of Saskatchewan. The OBGYN Academy has created a series of videos about COVID-19 that we would like to share with you. In this video, we're going to talk about self-monitoring versus self-isolation. Everybody needs to self-monitor. When you're self-monitoring, you don't have any signs or symptoms of COVID-19. However, what you're doing is that you're checking for any signs or symptoms. So you're checking your body temperature. And we made a different video where we describe the signs and symptoms of COVID-19 that you can watch. You could record the temperature readings in a chart or on a piece of paper. And if you develop any signs or symptoms of COVID-19, most commonly being fever and cough, it is important to self-isolate and to seek medical care and, if appropriate, get tested. Self-isolation is staying at home to prevent the spread of infection. So you're avoiding situations that have the potential to spread the infection. You're avoiding public places, work, school, crowded places. You're avoiding people from coming to your home to socialize and gather. You're avoiding public transportation. So this includes bus, subway, taxi, um, Uber, Lyft services. And you're avoiding um, contact with people in your own household. So it's important to sleep in a separate room, have good air ventilation, uh, go into the room that you sleep in and to use a separate bathroom. In terms of food, um, lots of stores have delivery options where they will drop off food to your door uh, without having a contact with the delivery person. So you can use some of those services. If you live at home alone, it is important to have somebody who will check up on you or check in on you uh, without actual direct contact. And um, what they can do is that if you need something, if you need a food or supplies, they can drop it off at your doorstep. So that is the difference between, between self-monitoring and self-isolation, where self-monitoring is basically you're checking in, you don't have any symptoms, you're just checking in to see do you have any symptoms, do you have any fever, do you have any cough, whereas self-isolation is you're preventing or avoiding the spread of infection to other people. So when to self-isolate? That's a really good question. Different parts of the world may have different criteria of when to self-isolate. So it's important to be familiar with the criteria that is in the city that you live in. And um, I'm going to post um, the criteria for Saskatchewan, which is the province that I live in. And uh, this criteria may change over time. So that's why I'm not going to post the actual criteria in this video, because it may be different by the time you watch this video. The most common um, a time to self-isolate is that if when you're returning from international travel, we know that it can take up to 14 days from the time somebody gets exposed to the time somebody develops symptoms. And that's why it's important to self-isolate for 14 days. Um, other uh, times to self-isolate is that if you're having symptoms, so if you're having cough, fever, and you can take a look at our symptoms uh, video to see what those are. Once you finish self-isolating, you're not symptomatic, you haven't been exposed again to somebody who is COVID positive, uh, then in that case, you can go back to self-monitoring. 